going, stranger. And you can dig. Alrighty, I've been uh, dancing here for like 20 minutes. Um, I'm up on a hill by myself, talking to a camera, dancing. I don't know what my life is anymore. Yeah, this is where Dwen was shot. That's the creepy tree. If you've seen that film, you know some really crazy stuff happens here. So it's true. The Dwen was rejected from this year's Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival. But here I am holding these international awards. So I think it's best we run back the clock and tell you the story of how we got here. So, it's 2018, and I just dropped out of the UE film program before even finishing one semester. Yeah, technically a college dropout. I realized it just wasn't for me and I wanted to create my own path and got to work as soon as I left on my first attempt at a full-on horror. And this was back when I had no camera, no microphones, money, lights, and little filmmaking expertise. And I was terrified that anyone would even take this seriously. I had everything telling me that this was a waste of time and it wouldn't turn out great, but I had a will to make this work, and that's when I created... And my god, people took it seriously. It got selected for two local film festivals where I had my own Q&A session, it screened on TV via TTT for their Live for Local Halloween series, got me a live interview on the Now Morning Show with Lisa Wickham, and became one of my most viewed and positively received short films ever on YouTube. I continue to make YouTube videos and different genres of short films over the years, getting better and better in my filmmaking capabilities as time went on, but never returned to horror. But there were always echoes of comments I continued to see all the time and started to play in my head. So I knew that I wanted to make a new horror and I wanted to make it as real and as dark as I possibly could just to show people my newfound skills as a filmmaker and just I guess the potential that I have now after not doing a horror for like so many years. From the start I knew that I just wanted to kind of instill fear back into people when they walk into the bushes or if they hear their name or a noise and with that in mind I got to work. Truth be told, I don't even like horror, but I made sure to watch a bunch of them for inspiration. I took from Parasite for this hand shot, the diner scene from Mulholland Drive, the daylight horror theme from Midsummer, and got to work on writing. Oddly enough, I had so much fun writing the most dark, raw, and gut-wrenching material for this film. I said multiple times that I felt sadistic, knowing how uncomfortable I'm intentionally trying to make the audience feel as I'm writing this, and how enjoyable it actually was, creating the tension, the jump scares, that feeling of existential dread like I don't like where this is going. I knew from the start I wanted to keep this scene without any music, shaky camera, and the unsettling environment. And I knew I wanted the opening scene extremely intense, so you know, this is the level we're on. You promised. You promised. You promised me. You promised me! Please, you promised! You promised! You promised me! <sighs> Damn. I don't know why I like to write scary stuff. I realize that I really do. I don't know if it's a thing with these comedic types, you know? Todd Phillips, who did the Hangover trilogy, directing Joker. Jordan Peele doing... Claire's down! She's dead! She's dead! I'm calling the cops! She's dead! <laughs> and then directing films like Get Out and Nope. Either way, I had my finished script, shot list, and it was time to start filming. And the thing is, is when you're filming, you really need to know what you're trying to capture because in camera and without context, the footage is so ridiculous. You said you promised. <laughs> Listen, there's no context to this one. <laughs> ah! Ah! No, 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 no! Ready and action. As soon as filming wrapped, which took a few days, 
I edited as fast as I could to submit to the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival before the deadline. I ended up submitting it as an unfinished draft until finally, I updated the final draft and patiently waited to see if my film was selected for the festival, until finally, it was the notification days, and I couldn't be more excited. got rejected. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like I said, I submitted it as an unfinished draft, which is something that you can do and then update them on when the finished draft will be finished, which is what I did and included in my cover letter. Put my email, said contact me if anything, and I didn't hear back from them at all, so I guess I assumed that my submission was in good standing. I even emailed them and asked them like, hey, can another review be taken at it or was something wrong with my submission? And I got a very generic like, oh, we all don't get selected for festivals sometimes. But it's funny because I submitted this exact same file to another local film festival and they've been in constant communication with me. I got selected for that one. It was disappointing, not for me. It was more that I knew this will never get a cinema experience. I'll never be able to have a bunch of people in a room and have them watch it because they usually partner with Movie Town. That really sucked. But I knew I wasn't gonna stop there. I always wanted to submit to film festivals internationally. So I looked online forever and handpicked a few film festivals which looked kind of nice and submitted to those. And here we are, a few submissions later and uh, I got some awards. I forgot to mention this, but the film festival on the left actually had their screening at a cinema in Pennsylvania where it was held. So after all, Dwen ended up having an international cinema experience by audiences. Obviously, this is not Cannes Film Festival. Steven Spielberg didn't watch it himself and was like, oh my god. Oh my god. But still, I'm happy to, I guess, put Trinidad films and culture and stuff like that on the map. It's a start. And I obviously intend to do that in 2023. And, you know, the year is going on. So that's the story. This is the Dwen tree. The sun is setting. I don't know how uh, safe it is to be up here for all of you who are superstitious. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys want more story time kind of videos like this, let me know and I will make them in the future. Thank you very much for watching this video and as always, I will see you in the next one. Peace. My dog is just... He's just like... Alake. Alake. You go poo Yeah, he's just enjoying the grass. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Peace.